Hey guys, I have no idea why this video is black and white, but the show must go on. I was messing with settings. I think I got the frame rate issue fixed, but whatever, we're black and white. But it might be fitting for the subject matter anyway. So in this video, we're gonna talk about an important figure in the bodybuilding and fitness community. Now, he may not be a guy you've heard of, but he's got an interesting story, and I think he deserves more recognition. The man, Jorg Papasik, actually trained Arnold Schwarzenegger for a bit in the 1970s, and then Stallone a decade later in the 1980s. He also trained other celebrities like Andrew Dice Clay, for example. And I'm gonna talk about all those men and their relationship to Jorg Papasik a little bit later on, but first, let's talk about the man himself. Oh, if you don't mind, can you hit that likes button? Can you smash that likes button to help out the YouTube algorithm to help support the channel? And if you're into this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Jorg Papasik, also known as George Papasik, was born on October 20th, 1940 in Czechoslovakia, which has since split into two separate countries, Slovakia and the Czech Republic. George used to play hockey as a teenager, during which time he and some friends began lifting weights at the age of 19. He really took to it and ended up becoming one of the most important representatives and pioneers of bodybuilding in Slovakia. In 1957, bodybuilding began to take root in Czechoslovakia, though it was not easy to convince the then communist regime that bodybuilding was a sport and even to include it as an official sport in the Czechoslovak Association of Physical Education. The first competition in bodybuilding over there did eventually take place in 1964, but it wasn't just a contest of the physique. Rather, it also incorporated several lifts in order to gauge the strength of each competitor. This was called the Power Triathlon, and each competitor's overall score was a result of both how they looked and how they performed, garnering points for each part of the competition, which would then be tallied up. George Papasik won his category in 1964, which at the time was determined by a competitor's height. He competed in the men measuring up to 175 centimeters, which is just under 5'9". Although he won his class, he was not the overall winner of the competition. That went to the taller man, Jurag Vizhny, in the over 175 centimeter category. It's kind of similar to what they used to do in the early days of the Mr. Olympia competition, but instead of height, they categorized by weight, over 200 pounds and under 200 pounds, which more or less ended up separating competitors by height, as you had people like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno competing in the over 200 category, and shorter guys like Franco Colombo and Frank Zane competing in the under 200 category. It's claimed that George Papasik is the unofficial four-time Czechoslovakian bodybuilding champion in the 1960s. Equivalency. <laughs> And it's been said that he won that title four years in a row. Since the first competition was in 1964, it seems as if he continued to win in 1965, 66, and 67. Since he began lifting at age 19, by 1964 he would have already been lifting for four to five years, which is about how long it takes most people to begin to reach their natural potential, assuming they're doing things correctly. Though in that time, the men in Czechoslovakia were really experimenting with working out, getting a lot of their info from Joe Weider magazines and their diets, at least according to an interview by Jorag Vizhny, were not exactly the best. He also claimed that they did train for hours on end, likely overtraining as they didn't know any better. But the men were young, usually in their late teens or early 20s when they began, and it's amazing how the body can recover and adapt, especially at such a young age. This was of course the age before video games, and young men at the time were generally athletic and they tended to play a lot of sports in their spare time. Now as far as George Papasik goes, I believe he was a natural bodybuilder and that he looked the part of a very well built natural bodybuilder. In fact, he actually addressed this in an interview in 2007 and said that we didn't know about steroids then. We had to honestly do everything while exercising with dumbbells. That dumbbell part is in reference to the lack of gym equipment they had at their disposal at the time. Though they've obviously must have worked out with Olympic bars too since those were used in competition to gauge their strength. As far as his strength goes, in that 1964 competition he performed the following lifts. Front squat of 167.5 kilograms, which is about 369 pounds. It's gotta be a pain to hold on your front shoulders. 140 kilogram bench press, which is 308 pounds. Not nearly as impressive as that front squat in my opinion. And then a curl of 66 kilograms, which is 145 pounds, which I'm guessing was probably a strict curl, and if that's the case without a swing in momentum, that's pretty impressive. Overall, he's got a pretty impressive looking physique, especially for that era, the 1960s. Today, it would be considered a very mainstream body type that the average guy would definitely want to look like, which is not something you could say about today's bodybuilders. Papasik immigrated to the United States in 1968 and initially found himself in menial low paying jobs. That was obviously not the reason why he moved to America, but rather the opportunity that the country provided. And like many immigrants who come to the US, he worked hard and his hard work eventually paid off. On a side note, if you're an American that was born in this country, I think a lot of our problem is we don't know anything different, so we just take it for granted. Whereas you get an immigrant like George Papasik, an outsider looking in, they see nothing but opportunity. Now maybe some of us do see the opportunity, but a lot of us just don't take advantage of it. And we tend to 
to focus on the negative, but that's not where our focus needs to be. So if you guys made goals for 2021, which I hope you did, don't be one of those guys or girls or whatever other that lets them fall to the wayside. Stick to it, write it down on a piece of paper, and if you're not following and pursuing it, it should piss you off. If it doesn't, that's a problem because you're clearly not passionate about it. But anyway, let's get back to George Pipasic. He was actually pretty innovative and had an engineering mindset as he would end up designing and building his own gym equipment. He stated that he invented all the tools and personally tested them and that he remade them many times before he was satisfied and that's why they exist only in the original form or at most there were two prototypes. Oh, uh, I invented that too. He actually ended up opening his own gym in Santa Monica in 1982, which was called the Santa Monica Bodybuilding Center. It was initially open to the public, but soon became too busy, at which point Papasic started giving private training sessions on the equipment that he designed himself. Furthermore, he designed exercises on the equipment individually for each person he trained according to their weight and height. In a 2007 interview, he talked about retiring in Slovakia and opening a new gym in Bratislava. The Santa Monica Bodybuilding Center that was opened in 1982 that Sloan trained at is definitely closed now. It looks like there's some cycling gym there now. As far as the gym in Bratislava, I couldn't find any info on that and I'm not sure if Papasic ever opened it, but the gym does live on. It just happens to be in Austria. In 2013, Marek Massey, co-founder of Sporta Real Lithana, started to train with Papasic. Years later, in March of 2017, Marek Massey opened what is called the Orange Gym by George Papasic. This brand is intended to preserve the estate of an extraordinary humble man and at the same time honor a legend of world culture. With the consent and license of Mr. George Papasic, this unique first European center was built in Austria. It looks like a really good gym. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that George Papasic trained Arnold Schwarzenegger at one time. The two men first met each other in the late 60s at the Munich European Championships. They would reconnect years later in early 1974 when Papasic would train Arnold for eight months. It should be noted that Arnold Schwarzenegger brought his biggest physique ever to the 1974 Mr. Olympia, weighing what he claimed was 250 pounds. Though a lot of people speculate he might have only been 240 or 245. Either way, his physique was bigger at the 1974 Mr. Olympia than it was in that popular documentary Pumping Iron, which covered the following year, 1975's Mr. Olympia. I believe he was 235 for that contest. Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, won those competitions because that's what he does. His first place prize was $1,000, which is quite a bit more than this round of stimulus checks many people are getting in the United States. We could all retire on this one. A pretty paltry sum overall, as you can't even buy one share of Tesla stock with that these days, but I digress. George Papasic and Arnold actually talked about opening a gym together, however that plan never materialized and Papasic would end up opening a gym by himself, which I mentioned earlier was in 1982. Now Sylvester Sloan became a member of that gym shortly after its opening in November of 1982. Sloan first trained alone, then replaced several coaches including Franco Colombo, and later asked Papasic to train both he and Dolph Lundgren as they prepared for Rocky IV. This was in January of 1984, by the way. Make sure to check out my video I did on Rocky IV to get more insight into the training routine that Papasic had Sylvester Stallone under. I'll link that in the description below. The two men would continue to work together as Stallone prepared for Rambo III, and here's some pictures of them on set together as Stallone pumps his muscles up between takes. Papasic said Stallone would usually pump up every 15 minutes and chomp on oatmeal cookies in order to blow up his muscles, usually his shoulders, in order to appear bigger and more impressive on screen. The two men would continue to have a friendship and working relationship throughout the 90s and even worked together for 2008's Rambo film. Their training for that film took place for two months in Thailand. However, their six days a week workouts from the Rocky IV and Rambo 3 R were a thing of the past. Instead, Papasic said Stallone's training was every other day for about 90 minutes a session and that the new Rambo physique, though not as lean, was about 20 pounds heavier, which I speculated about in my Rambo 4 video. I'll link that in the description below if you want to check it out. I also talk about his training with Gunnar Peterson in that and the workout that I believe he did prior to going to Thailand and working with George Papasic. There were talks at one point that Papasic and Sloan were going to produce sports equipment together. The equipment would have used Papasic's original designs, but Sloan's name in order to sell the product. However, as far as I can tell, that never materialized. Sylvester Stallone actually introduced comedian Andrew Dice Clay to George Papasic. For those who may not know, Andrew Dice Clay is really funny, and I think he was a staunch proponent of the feminist movement at the time. I got my tongue up this chick's ass, right? And she's looking down at me like, hey, do I know you? Because I'll tell you something, you know how boring it could be when you're online at the bank. So I stuck my tongue up a ring. What's the big fucking deal? On second thought, maybe not. Funny, yes. Feminist, no. 
In fact, his misogynistic behavior, among other things, ended up becoming his downfall. You could say he was an early victim of cancel culture before that became such a prevalent thing. Andrew Dice Clay referred to himself as the, quote, most vulgar, vicious comic ever to walk the face of the earth. In his defense, the persona Andrew Dice Clay took on stage was a character he played, and he claimed that his audience was really laughing at themselves, that no one could possibly have taken him seriously, and that his comedy was observational, not hateful. But that's what you get for being a nice guy. In the 1980s, he went from playing clubs to selling out arenas overnight, but as quickly as his descent to mainstream fame came, his descent was even swifter. Prior to all the backlash, he was literally the hottest comic in town during the 80s and was making up to $500,000 a night, was hanging out with rock stars like Axl Rose and movie stars like Sylvester Sloan, who, like I mentioned, introduced him to George Papasik. Because Andrew Dice Clay was such a hot commodity, the movie deals began to pour in, and that's why he trained with George Papasik in order to get himself in a good shape for the adventures of Ford Fairlane. In Andrew Dice Clay's book, The Filthy Truth, he talked about George Papasik, and when referring to him, he said, he was all about building up your natural strength, no steroids, no nothing but working on the machines that he built with his own hands. At 45, he looked 20 years younger. On a side note, this does lend a credence to Papasik being natural, as steroids, from what I've noticed on people, seems to age them faster, but obviously, overall genetics and lifestyle are huge determining factors when it comes to aging. As far as the training goes, and what Andrew Dice Clay still did decades later in order to prepare for 2013's Woody Allen film Blue Jazz, Jasmine, he said he still does what Papasik taught him, which for his goal was to quote, get into Rocky One shape. The workout consisted of circuit training, moving quickly from machine to machine, doing 21 reps at each and more than 500 crunches by the end of the workout. He really liked to get his heart rate up and incorporate a lot of endurance while working out. Other notable celebrities George Papasik trained have been Dolph Lundgren for Rocky IV, Tom Hanks and his wife Rita Wilson, as well as Sally Field and Tony Curtis. So anyway, that's George Papasik. Thanks for staying till the end and watching the entire video, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video.